Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were given a traditional welcome in Fiji when they arrived for a three-day visit as part of the royal tour, with all eyes on the Duchess of Sussex after it was revealed she is pregnant. Meghan wore a dress by Australian label Zimmerman, a Stephen Jones hat, earrings which were a gift from the Queen and a bracelet which was a gift from the Prince of Wales. She and Harry were met at Suva's Nazauri Airport by Fiji's High Commissioner Melanie Hopkins and Chief of Protocol, Jonathan Itagivata. The pair disembarked their Qantas charter flight to light rain and were introduced to the Han Frank Bainamra, Fiji's Prime Minister and his wife, Maria, Rotimu Mukapa, leader of the opposition, Alessandro Trapia, the High Commissioner's wife and Rear Admiral William Napoto. The Duchess was presented with a bouquet of flowers by a flower girl from the chiefly island of Ba, the island home of Ratu Ape and Siakaka Ba, who ceded Fiji to Britain in 1874, before Harry made his way to Adeus on the runway. Harry and Meghan observed a royal salute, and the Duke was then invited to inspect the Guard of Honor before Harry and Meghan left for their next engagement, a meeting with Fiji's president, Jayoji Khan Rat. As the couple's convoy left the airport, hundreds of well-wishers had lined the road out of the airport, waving flags and cheering. They headed to Albert Park for a welcome ceremony, known as the Virkra Kravi Vakavinyo, embodying Fijian cultural identity and heritage. Harry and Meghan sat on a stage as he was given the whale's tooth, a sign of wealth, in the Vakasabu, before he was given kava a traditional drink thought to have medicinal qualities which is made from a mashed plant root, and which was wrung out into a bowl and passed to him. He told the crowd, Bula Venica. The Duchess and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible during the next two days and celebrating the links and close friendship between Fiji and the United Kingdom. He signed off Venica, or thank you, to cheers and laughter. To close the ceremony, the couple watched a meek a traditional dance with Harry leaning forward in his seat. Dozens of people from the village of Naklo took to the Albert Park turf to perform for the Duke and Duchess. The area is known for its strong links to the armed forces. Harry's grandparents, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, attending the same event during their Commonwealth tour in 1953, which just as was the case with Harry and Meghan, marked their first royal tour since getting married. The couple who are expecting their first baby in spring, are currently part way through a 16-day tour which also includes engagements in New Zealand and Tonga, with Meghan having scaled back her list of official engagements slightly to stay rested. During their time in Australia, the couple were presented with the first presents for their new baby from Governor-General Sir Peter Cosgrove and his wife Lady Cosgrove, who gave them a toy kangaroo and its joey during a reception at their residence Admiralty House in Sydney. The royal couple also fitted in a visit to Taronga Zoo before visiting crowds outside the Sydney Opera House. After this they headed for Dubbo, where Harry and Meghan learned about the impact of the severe drought which has been plaguing the rural New South Wales city and were promptly drenched by a heavy downpour in Victoria Park. They then travelled south to Melbourne, where Meghan tried her hand at Aussie rules before being presented with a mini lifeguard uniform by the stars of reality TV show Bondi rescued during a trip to the world-famous beach. Harry reached new heights as he raised the Invictus Games flag alongside three competitors and an ambassador on the Sydney Harbour Bridge on the eve of the opening ceremony. Saturday saw the Duke wear the tropical dress of his Blues and Royals Regiment as he opened the extension of the Anzac Memorial in Sydney which commemorates the war dead from Australia and New Zealand. An electrical storm delayed the start of the Invictus Games opening ceremony on the Saturday evening. However, the Duke eventually took to the stage on the forecourt of the Sydney Opera House to praise the Invictus generation who have shown the true meaning of resilience. He added, the Invictus generation has chosen to serve their countries in conflicts that are complex and dangerous and far too often this dedication goes unrecognized. They have reminded us all what selfless duty really looks like. The couple will return to Australia on Friday to watch competitors take part in the Invictus Games ahead of Saturday's closing ceremony.
the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have arrived on Queensland's Fraser Island as their whirlwind tour down under continues, with Prince Harry taking part in a traditional welcome to country ceremony as a pregnant Meghan Markle rests at a luxury resort. After touching down in Queensland on Monday morning from Sydney, the royal couple went their separate ways. The Duke took the barge to the island, which was reportedly refurbished ahead of the occasion, while the Duchess, dressed in a maroon, polka dot dress by in other stories, arrived on a whale-watching vessel. Crowds had lined up along the Kingfisher jetty to catch a glimpse of the couple as they stepped off their boats, with both the Duke and Duchess giving a wave to excited onlookers when they arrived. During their time on the island, the couple will be based at the luxurious Kingfisher Bay Resort, which boasts secluded beach houses, timber lodges surrounded by the bush and deco-friendly hotel rooms. Prince Harry and Meghan earlier appeared relaxed as they boarded a Royal Australian Air Force jet at Sydney Airport, bound for the Wilderness Island, after travelling from Admiralty House, their harbour city accommodation. Hervey Bay Eco Marine Tourists posted a photo of the Duchess on their Instagram page with the caption, Very exciting day here today at the marina. The glowing Meghan Markle passing through on her way to Curry. Their Royal Highnesses are visiting Fraser Island or Curry as it is known by the traditional owners the Butchola people, as part of the dedication of the site to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, QCC. The QCC raises awareness of indigenous forests and allows countries in the Commonwealth to exchange knowledge and ideas about the best practice for forest conservation. The Duke of Sussex later headed to Lake Mackenzie after the QCC dedication and meet with local elders to learn about the history of the island, before heading down to 75 Mile Beach as part of a busy day of engagements. Prince Harry took off his shoes and walked in the shallows of the lake after the welcome to country where he had his feet brushed with leaves during the indigenous ceremony. The expecting Duchess of Sussex is foregoing her royal duties for the day due to the rough terrain of the island, but there will be plenty for her to do even as tourist. Kensington Palace has confirmed Meghan will spend Monday relaxing at the resort, where the couple will spend the night but she is hoped to be well enough for a meet and greet with the public later in the afternoon. He spent a considerable amount of time talking to the local Butchola people who showed him around the world's largest sand island. The Duke was expected to take particular interest in his visit to the beach, as it served as a training base for an elite Z special force unit during World War II. The unit used the area to prepare for jungle and amphibious training ahead of missions into Asia and are credited with playing a major role in Australia's victory at Singapore Harbour. The ruins of the Z-Force Commando School remain on the western side of the island, nearby the resort. While on Fraser Island, Prince Harry will also meet National Park Rangers to learn about the island's unique animal and plant life and its history of logging. Due to their famed toughness, Fraser Island's hardwood trees were used to build the London docks in the 1930s. Later, the Duke will head to Kingfisher Bay and walk along the jetty hopefully with Meghan. The couple are expected to be greeted by an enthusiastic crowd of fans, as tickets to cross to Kingfisher Bay have sold out for the day. Fraser Island is the fourth stop on the royal couple's Australian leg of their tour, after they visited Sydney, Dubbo, in the New South Wales Central West, and Melbourne. Following their visit to Fraser Island, the royal couple are heading to Fiji then Tonga before a trip back to Sydney for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. Their mammoth 16-day tour finishes in New Zealand. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are already disagreeing on their new royal baby's future, Radar Online reports. According to the U.S. publication, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are bickering over who will take care of their royal taunt. Harry wants to honor tradition and have a royal nanny opens a new window. Like he had when he was a child, a source tells the site. His mother, Princess Diana, was very hands-on, but Harry and his brother were in reality raised by the royal nanny and he wants this for his child too. But, according to Radar Meghan isn't having it. Yes, she will have professional help, but she wants her mother to help raise the baby, not someone that the family appoints. The source further claimed. The Duchess of Sussex wants to have her mother, Doria Ragland, 
move from California to London and help with the upbringing. She's going to find a flat, the source said. She's not moving into the palace, but they will find a place for mommy, and mommy's going to help out. Doria sent fans wild last month after she was spotted taking baby care classes. The 62-year-old former social worker and yoga instructor is reportedly taking classes as the cradle company in Pasadena, Los Angeles, the Daily Star reported. The Duchess of Sussex's mother has been learning vital skills, such as first aid from specialist coaches in L.A. Meghan wants to avoid hiring staff if possible once her first child arrives. The thought of having her mum move in with them and take on the role of baby nurse is the best possible solution to that. Even more so because it's something Doria has always wanted to do anyway. A source added to the paper, she's learned everything from breastfeeding and lactation consultancy, basic baby care, CPR and first aid. The course also covers sleep training for later on, weaning and helping the new mother with her recovery.